it's Shawnee. Welcome back. I'm actually at home. Um, I was in my office earlier today and it took me an hour and a half to get home. I don't know what's going on in the DMV. I don't know if it's the warm weather or something, but wow. Okay. But I thought I would sit down and do an eye look anyway. I'm going to take this off and chat with you about the news. I feel like we haven't talked about the news in a while. So this actually is like makeup that I have had on all day. Um, so it's looking a little rough, I think. So I'm just gonna take the eye makeup off because I just feel like chatting. Hopefully you have watched my collab video with Jan. <laughs> we did like a friend tag to, and we answer questions about one another to see how much we know each other. And it was like, I feel like both videos are hilarious. I mean, <laughs> needless to say, we know each other very well. But hopefully you have seen that. If not, you definitely need to check it out. <laughs> you need to check out both videos, hers and mine. Okay, I think it's mostly off. I'm gonna just jump right in. First of all, I have a question. I'm sure y'all see on the news at different times, people are like, they happened upon like a bag or a suitcase or something and they open it up and it's like something terrible. I was thinking about that the other day. Just, you know, sitting here contemplating things and I was like, I don't think I would ever find myself in that situation because if I'm gonna go in with the makeup by Mario eye prep and set if I were to come across some sort of bag like a plastic bag a suitcase a um, duffel bag and it looks suspicious I'm gonna leave it right there let me know if it, maybe I'm different. Other people are different from me. I don't know. But I don't know what what it is that calls people to like open stuff like that. Because when I see that, I feel like it is an indicator that I should stay away. And, you know, I don't feel too bad about it because obviously somebody's going to come behind me and they're going to go ahead and open it up. But I see these people like on the news and in like true crime stuff. And they're like, yeah, I was just like jogging in the park and I saw a suitcase. And I was like, why is that suitcase there? Let me go over there and check it out. <laughs> Y'all are a different breed because that that is my like... I'm going to avoid it at all costs because you know what? Nothing good is going to come of it. Nothing good. I've never heard a story where someone was like, I happened upon this bag and it just changed my life for the better. No. Now you are up on the news trying to explain stuff. They got you in the police station asking you how you happened upon the bag. And Uh-uh. No. No. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I'm gonna just leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it right there. And I can't feel too bad because somebody, obviously someone else, maybe one of y'all is gonna come right behind me and they're gonna open it up. That's fine. I don't know, let me know if you would. I just, I've been just thinking about that. I don't know why, but I just been like, ain't no way. And you know it's never a mannequin. They're always like, so-and-so thought he saw a mannequin, so he went over there. When has it ever been a mannequin? It's never been a mannequin. It's not a mannequin, okay? It's never been one. It's never going to be one. People are like, why is there a mannequin in the middle of the street? Y'all. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a terrible person, but I just... Not to say that if something is going on, I'm not going to intervene. You know, I'm not just going to be a bystander. But I have just never understood. It seems like every story is like... They opened up the bag. They... All this stuff. And I'm like, you guys are different. 
You people who do that, kudos to you. You are better than me. Now, I realize I haven't used my, like, bigger five-pan Natasha Denona palettes in a while, so this is the Cupid one. And I figured I would just do something with this. But yeah, let me know if you would go ahead. Maybe you're one of those people, and maybe you have a different set of values than I do, because I guess I'm just about, I don't know, protecting myself. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm selfish. It's a possibility. I think I'll go in with this shade here. But, yeah. I don't know why that was on my mind. Anyway, did you see the eclipse? Oh my God, listen, I have had it on my calendar. And I think out here we were going to get like the, it was going to be the best at like 320. Oh, I was prepared. I had my glasses and everything. I actually bought a pack of glasses because I couldn't just get one for some reason. Um, And it came with three. So I had one for myself. And then... I gave one to one neighbor and one to another neighbor. It was really cool. I am jealous that I wasn't in the path, like it wasn't the total eclipse. Ugh, I think we only got like 87% of it or something. But you know, things like this, like we haven't had anything like positive and exciting in like four years, right? So afterwards, I'm just reading the news and stuff. And apparently, because humans, there was like an uptick on the Google search. Like after that, uh, the searches were, why do my eyes hurt? And my eyes hurt. Because some people <laughs> were foolish enough to just go out there and be like, Y'all trying to just burn your retina off. Both retinas. My client told me that, and I was like, you lying. And then I went and looked, and then, yeah. That, there, there's, that's been the search. The popular searches over the past few days. Ophthalmologists are going to be so busy. <laughs> They're like, damn it all to hell. <sighs> So people out here just being foolish. And you know, a lot of different news media were like um, live streaming it and stuff. So I was reading about this media company, like a news company, um, news channel in, I think it was in Mexico. And they were talking about like where you could see these, the solar eclipse and everything. And so they were going to show a live, you know, a live video of it. So they're naming off all the cities and places you could see it. And then they cut to the solar eclipse footage. Instead of it being a solar eclipse footage, <laughs> it was a close-up of a man's testicles. <laughs> Some fool went ahead. I'm gonna go in. I'm, I'm gonna just go through the mats. Some fool sent it in, sent a video in as a prank of a close up of some testicles. I don't know if they were his. I don't know if they were his, okay? I don't know that I want to think about how, why, when, and any other question he filmed this or if someone, is it somebody else's boss? Is it. Hit, like, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, somebody always got to be a fool. Somebody always. There has to be at least one fool in the bunch. So, I guess they didn't They didn't pay attention to the, the video. Or maybe they... <laughs> maybe they thought... <laughs> maybe they somehow thought that it was... It, it was the eclipse... I mean, just imagining the two. I 
No. 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 And so they're just reading out the thing. <laughs> Terrible. It's on live TV. And they realize, like, oh, snap, this isn't, you know, this is not the eclipse. And so they, like, cut the feed, you know. And then they come back on and they're like, oh, this was just, like, an amateur video. Um, thanks for sticking around for the program. I'm like, that's all y'all gonna say. <laughs> and then I was reading the news story. Apparently, there is a link to watch the uncensored video. No, I did not watch it. No, I did not. I, I wasn't. Sometimes I like to click on stuff and be like, let me see this for myself. No. Okay. Th that's no. No. I'm I'm serious, y'all. I did not watch it. I know some of y'all are like, you lying. I swear. I swear I didn't watch it. Okay. First of all, it's not the most attractive, uh, you know, part of the body. Like, it's, it's not cute. And I, I would prefer to, to I don't want to look at somebody that I don't know. Like, <laughs> because also, let me know who it is. Is it you, sir, that sent it in? I mean, it feels real intimate, and I, I'm not quite sure we're at that point. Like, I don't know who you are, and I'm, I'm not trying to get a close up of your junk, of your bits and pieces. I guess just your bits. I don't know. I'm like, how y'all gonna ruin the eclipse? <laughs> nobody, nobody looked. Nobody looked. No, like y'all didn't see who's the producer on this section of the the news because somebody somebody needs to be fired. You did not do your job. You did not. How you going to think? No, ain't no way. Ain't no way that you thought that was the eclipse. Girl. <laughs> Speaking of foolishness that has to do with with genitals. So the Pope accepted the resignation of this Polish bishop. What's his name? Let me I wrote it down. Gregor's Kazak. He's 59 years old. Most often it seems like bishops and stuff, they retire around 75. So he still had a couple of years to go, right? But he resigned because of some uh, shenanigans from one of his priests. Let me get his name. Father Tomas Z. They haven't given his whole, his full last name. So the, the bishop... Uh, like sends a letter and he's like, please forgive my human limitations. You already know it's starting. You already like church folks. We like to say that like, <laughs> I'm human. The Lord is still working on me. The flesh. You know what I'm saying? So I love it. So let me tell you. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> so uh, Father Tomas Z. He had a little party. I didn't know, I didn't know priests be up there just getting their life, right? Partying. Um, I think I'm going to go in with this shimmer. So, Father Tomas. These priests are out here. Like, remember, what was it, last month I was talking about the, the like, one priest was handing out, was it meth? What was he? One was handing out meth. The other, some other substances, like, the world is changing, okay? <laughs> Priests are out here. First of all, I could go into that, but I'm not going to, you know, the Catholic Church. But Father Tomas decided to have a little party. And he was handing out party favors, party drugs. Apparently, he had a male sex worker there at the party. I don't know how he found it. I, I don't know. I don't know who was on the list. I don't know how. I don't, what were the invitations like? I don't know if Father Tomas was in his, like, priest 
outfit or if he was in like secular clothes. I'm not sure. But Father Tomas, I guess he wasn't watching how much people, how much stuff people were having. And this, this young man, the male sex worker, he done, he fell out. He fell out because he took too much erectile dysfunction medication. I know that stuff is like, if, if, you know, if it's been like four hours and stuff is still happening, like go to your nearest emergency room. But I don't know how much he took or nothing, but he falls out, right? And so one of the other party goers, they like call the, the emergency services. The emergency services get to Tomaz's house. I'm sorry, Father Tomaz, his house, and he won't let him in. He won't let him in. He didn't let them in until the police came. And then I guess he was like, okay, guys, you can come in and, like, help this person who might be dying on my floor. So now Father Tomaz, he is being sentenced for sexual offenses, supplying drugs, and failing to provide assistance to a person in danger of loss of life or serious bodily harm. But, y'all... Apparently, this hasn't been the first time that there's been some shenanigans going on at this church or in this, 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 um, diocese. It's been other stuff. So, one, it's like the sex party. There was, like, a murder-suicide of a deacon and a priest. Something was going on. The priest killed the deacon and then himself. And then there was some other thing. I'm like... Whatever diocese y'all got going on under Bishop Kazak, y'all need to rethink it. You need to rethink it. I'm just stuck on, why did this man say they couldn't come into his house? Like, Father, we, all know, we already know what's going on, sir. We already know what's going on, okay? Like, I mean, you really going against the cloth right now because you're letting someone who is obviously in distress you're just gonna let this man lay here and be falling out from whatever you gave him listen do what you need to and do what you want to father it just seems like what you were doing doesn't quite align with what i know of the catholic church and I love how it's like, the Pope has accepted his resignation. What else the Pope gonna do? <laughs> no, it's all good. I feel like the Pope, they could have been fine with the sex party. Maybe, okay? Like, they, they would transfer him to another parish and he would go under, you know, camps, counseling and mentorship and stuff. But I think what, what might have ticked it over the edge was the fact that you let this man almost die on your floor. That feels real non-priest-like. How you gonna do that? <laughs> it was like, no, you are not allowed in my home. Why, Father? Why? You know, he was being real selfish. You weren't thinking about anybody else, Father Tomas, because you had this young man. I don't know how, how the, the man is, but it's probably young, right? You had this young man because the bishop is 59. So I'm wondering how old Father Tomas is. Maybe he's in his... How old do you have to be to be a father? Like, I don't know. Where was he having this party? Was this on church grounds? Like, who was there? Who? I, I'm trying to figure out. Like, was he just, like, telling people when they came for confession? Like, hey, we're going to have a party on Friday. <laughs> Say 10 Hail Marys and I see you at 8. Like, I'm wondering, I would just like to know the logistics. I would like to know the logistics, you know? These priests are out here, y'all doing the most. Really not helping your reputation. Really not making the Catholic Church look any better than doesn't look good anyway, but you're not helping the situation. I'm trying to figure out why Father Tomas, maybe he was in the back like 
praying. But he... I'm not even going to make that joke. Like, why wasn't he going to let them in? That seems real selfish. I feel like it's real unholy. Real unholy. That's so shady. How you going to do that? You invited this man to your party. You supplied him with something. Because it doesn't seem like he brought it himself. Because you know what? I feel like if he brought it himself, maybe Father Tomas would have let the, the people in. No, I don't know. But it sounds to me, the way I read it, was that um, somehow Father Tomas was the one supplying the party drugs. Like the bishop don't, you don't have control over your, uh, your employees, your flock. I don't know. You'll have control over him though, bishop. What is he supposed to do now? What do you do after, what do you do after you resign as a bishop? Do you, like, can you just go get like a regular job? Like you'd probably have to do something in customer service, right? Yeah. Or like management. I would assume. I don't know. I don't know. Because I feel like every time there's something like religious, they're like, you know... Father so-and-so is going to take some time to connect with his spiritual leaders. and But what else do you do? That's what you've been doing. They don't make much money, though. I don't know. I really don't know. I feel kind of bad because his priests and deacons and stuff are making him look bad. You know when you have those, like, bad kids? <laughs> like... Y'all making me look bad, okay? Child, but let me tell you one more story. That I actually, I I mean, maybe you'll have a different opinion. So, there was, the, you know, people, listen, people are applying for jobs and it's very hard. Like, the job market isn't the greatest. And it takes a lot of time and energy to apply for jobs, you know? Like, when I was hiring folks... My practice I was trying to be as efficient and like like let me let you know so that you know if you, you need to look for something else or let's get this um let's do this interview as soon as possible you know because it like yeah now this person was applying for some kind of job it didn't say what kind of job it was but I think he he did an online application kind of the deal these days and he was waiting to hear back right so it seems like he got his response like they sent an email and the email just said decline <laughs> it didn't say like hello sir madam nothing it didn't say thank you for your application you know we had a we had a very strong pool of applicants for this position and we really appreciated all the work and experience that you have but we don't feel like this is a good fit at this time no it just said decline I don't even think it had a period like <laughs> so apparently he's real upset about it but then I was thinking like I feel like it's right to the point and you don't have all the fluff language, you know? It's just like, listen, no, no. But the guy, he feels like it's very unprofessional and like rude. And I don't know. Initially, I was like, man, that's shady. But on the other hand, having been on like hiring committees and stuff and like, reading like recommendations and you have to go through like let's figure out who's the best fit and I feel like it's straight to the point and it is better than just saying no right it's like decline and I think the company so you put the company all on blast 
And I think the company was trying to make it seem like he was the only one they did that to. And it was just like an error. Uh-uh. They sent it to several people. <laughs> that, yes. Okay. That would, that would probably... Y'all probably hurt my ego a little bit. I feel like I would probably have to do a, like a, a reply. Like, does this mean I don't have the job? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm just, I just want to follow up. <laughs> like, Todd in management. Like, does this mean I don't have the, like, like I'm, a, I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like oh my god that's so rude I don't know I'm kind of on the other side I'm just like yeah you didn't have to go through all the fluff and like pop in circumstance they're just like yeah no decline yeah what do you think it could, you know occasionally I can be rude so maybe I'm just being like rude and insensitive. So, you know, it's not me applying for the job. And I'm trying to think if somebody was like, this is what they said. I was like, dang, that's kind of shady. But it is very much like, you know, I mean, I would probably still have questions like, you know, like, what, what does this mean? <laughs> So I don't, I don't start on Monday. <laughs> like, I need some clarification because, you know, I've never had this experience before. I just, I, you know, this is like company policy. Like, <laughs> huh? Oh dear God, she's that's you know that's somebody intern. <laughs> somebody told their intern when you just send out these emails to folks that we're not gonna like we're not gonna hire. That's the you listen, that's Gen Z for you. That is Gen Z. <laughs> Decline. <laughs> Like, he was trying to run a credit card or something. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're like, please don't. Please don't. Please don't apply again, okay? No. <laughs> and now you done put yourself all out there because I think he put it on social media because if it's not on social media, it doesn't count, right? Now we all know. It's probably easy for me to judge because it's not me. But it's like, remember, for like college applications, if you got like the little small letter, small envelope, that means you didn't get in. But if you had like a huge packet that they sent to you, you know, that means that you probably did. It feels like that, like, you know, just no, like, best of luck in your future endeavors, but it's not going to be here. I feel like that, that was somebody intern, or they're going to blame it on an intern. Like, there was there was a glitch in the system. Y'all lying through your teeth. You know y'all sent that man just in an email. <laughs> I mean it probably would have been worse if it was like a, a mailed letter and it just said decline. Like dang, you need, can, can I get some feedback on my application? Like, no. <laughs> Rose Anchor, where do you come from? What you doing? 
What are you doing? I'm out of nowhere. I mean, how have you been told she, she didn't get a job? Because I, I'm... I feel for him. I hope he got hired somewhere else. So. Um. <laughs> that poor man. Oh. Because you know what? Applying for a job, it's hard. It's hard. They could have took a... Uh, they could have took a little bit more. Like, I don't even know if they put that man's name. <laughs> So here's, I don't know y'all, here's the finished look. Uh, what, what's happening here, Lenny? Um, yeah, I still like these five pans. I need to use them more often. I hope that Pat McGrath comes out with more five pans. Cause I really like those, especially since they're like that cardboard packaging. So it feels like easier to take with you without being afraid of things shattering um I don't know this is just some a little something something I deal with my face I just wanted to talk to you <sighs> I hope that some of this was helpful and I also hope that you are continuing to take care of yourself let me know what you think let me know if you would go ahead and um open up the bag or if you would think that it's a mannequin let me know what you think about Father Tomas and the Bishop let me know what you think about the accidental live footage of that man's junk. And then how do you feel about just getting an email that says decline to your your job application? I would love it if you liked the video and I would love it even more if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.